Police are warning passengers who use ride-sharing apps to be extra careful after a college student in South Carolina was murdered when she accidentally got into a car she thought was her Uber. That was not the first time a predator posed as a ride-share driver. The New York Times found at least two dozen attacks have taken place in the last few years. And joining us now are two women who survived attacks by men they believe to be their Uber drivers. We have Carla Westland and Elizabeth Suarez. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. I know that this Samantha Josephson case has brought back traumatic memories for both of you about what happened. Carla, I want to start with you. Tell us about that night in 2017 and why you believed the car you got into was your Uber. I was on the phone with my Uber driver at the time. There was lots of cars in the road. And, you know, I think like so many people, uh, unfortunately, they get in the car that they think is their their car. You know, it might look the same. It might be the same make and model. Um, I've heard of this so often. Yeah. So unfortunately, it is a problem. Me too. Me too. Um, and so you got in the car and what unfolded over the next three hours um, just sounds like a living nightmare. So describe to us what happened. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, uh, I fell asleep in the back seat. He actually asked me for my address. I thought he was just confirming it. Um, and then I woke up, we were parked somewhere, and he was banging my head into the seat. Mm. Um, he then, you know, he forced me to take off my clothes, mm. and then I was raped. And yeah, it was a very difficult situation. Um, his objective was for me to think he was a good guy so that I wouldn't go to the cops. Mm -hmm. My objective was for him to think that I wasn't gonna, gonna go to the cops so he could just let me go. How, how, um, did, you, my, how did you escape? Uh, with those tactics, I was trying to make up for my physical strength with my mental strength. Mm -hmm. um, oddly enough, I remember seeing on a Grey's Anatomy episode that if you start talking about your life to an attacker, it'll force them to humanize you mm -hmm. and they'd be less inclined to hurt you. So I could actually sense uh, near the end of my uh, sexual assault, um, I could tell he was starting to panic. Mm. Um, so with that in mind, I just started rambling and then he actually started crying. Um, so it is a very good tactic. Well, I mean, you made it out alive, thank God. And um, yeah, we should you. let people know that there were six other women who were sexually assaulted, uh, who police say were sexually assaulted by this same guy. And today he has a court hearing. He was captured, he was arrested, and today he has a court hearing. So that is, um, obviously a positive outcome of all of this. So Elizabeth, tell us what happened. You were at a Las Vegas hotel. Tell us how it came to pass that you got into the wrong car. So I had ordered an Uber on my phone and I headed out to the valet um, and the car drove up and gestured over to me and opened the back of the car. And I said, hi, are you here for Liz? And he goes, yeah, get in. You know, I've taken Uber since college, so I didn't think anything of it. And we started driving about five minutes later, I get a call from my real Uber. And he's like, I'm outside of the casino, where are you? And that's when it all clicked, I'm in the wrong car. You know, and, the and then, I mean, when you, was, that, was that a chilling moment when you realized, that, did you know yet that you were in danger at that point? At, at that point, I did, and just I went into complete panic mode. I didn't, I didn't freeze up. I knew I had to get out of the situation because he, he was in full control. He could do whatever he wanted, and so I just knew, get out, get out. Just keep thinking on my toes. And he took you to a deserted parking lot. How did you escape? Well, um, I jumped out. You know, he he stopped the car behind the Albertsons parking lot. And he told me to give him his, my wallet, my phone, everything I had. So I threw it at him and I thought he was going to let me out. But he actually sped up like he was going to, you know, take me to a different location. But I opened the back seat of the car and I jumped out, um, broke my wrist, my ankle. And then I had seven staples in the back of my head. Oh, my gosh, because you jumped out of the car while it was moving. And I mean, I though you got injured, who knows if that saved your life. And so and so from these horrible experiences, obviously, you both have learned things that you want to share with the viewing public about how to avoid something like this. And so, Carla, I know that you've created an acronym, CASA, C-A-S-A. -S -A. What's your guidance for the rest of us? Um, yes, this is a very good tool for passengers. Um, I think the biggest thing that people don't do is they stand, they don't stand outside of the car, lean in and ask the driver, who are you here for? So often I've heard 
my friends, they just get into the car and they say, oh, are you here for Carla? And then you just gave them the magic answer that they needed. Um, so that would be crucial, I would say. Yes. Okay. So and that's be aware. And so that's, so let's go through it. So you say check, obviously now we know, mm -hmm. check the license plate. That is a must. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't even just ask the driver, you know, what's your name or tell the driver your name, obviously check for the license plate, check the make and model, um, mm -hmm. look at the driver's picture, make sure it matches what's on your phone. Ask the driver to identify you before name before you get in the car. I mean, of course, that yes. makes sense. But, you know, as we just heard from Elizabeth, and, and I think we all do it, we say, are you here for Elizabeth? Are you here for Allison? That's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. So say, who Correct. are you here for? And then mm -hmm. share. This is interesting, okay, because I didn't know about this. So tell us about the share um, aspect to let your loved ones know where you are. Yeah, so now uh, on the app, you can actually share your ride with a friend. Um, so I recommend doing that for every ride if you can. Uh, if not actually share your ride physically with your friend, have a friend with you in the car. I think that would be a great option as well. Um, but yeah, with the app, they can track you the whole entire trip. Yeah, so that is really helpful. To, so make sure that you share sort of your coordinates with your yes. friends so that they know where to find you. And of course, if you can use the buddy system, always travel with somebody else. Well, ladies, uh, Carla and Elizabeth, thank you very much for sharing your personal stories with us. Obviously, um, you know, these are horrible stories, but I think that you may be saving other people from uh, that fate. So thank you both very much. Thank you so much. Thank John. you. It takes guts to come on. It really does. And talk to try to make things better for other people.